Well, it's all go here on Salty Lass. Um, Beverly is currently trying to fix our impella. Oh, so I jury rigged um, this to try and make a handle, but unfortunately it's just not good enough. It's not working properly. So we're talking about jury rigging today. What exactly is a jury? No. <laughs> I was just going to talk about it. No, I'm going to introduce why we're talking about your jury rigging as a topic. That's what I'm starting on. Well, start with the definition. No, I'm talking about why we're talking about it. We're talking about... Anyway, regardless, I was doing some sewing today and um, my knob, which uh, actually makes my sewing machine uh, work, completely collapsed. So what I've had to do is I've had to make a jewellery rig and this is my contraption here. But it just makes me think about what is a jewellery rig? A jewellery rig is not fixing uh, your trial in court. It is actually uh, a workaround. Putting something in um, that will get through a problem and put in a fix. Some people um, call it a jerry rig or like I say workaround, jewellery rig. But here on Salty Lass, we call it a jewellery rig because, quite frankly, the jewellery's out on that one. You realise I've just dipped the microphone in the tea for this? <laughs> yeah, but that's a different type of mucking up. Okay, so there is a question of why would you bother jury rigging anything? I mean, why not just fix it properly? And the problem is that you may not have the choice. We classify our jury rig stuff into two uh, main groups. Critical and non-critical. Let's talk about critical first. A critical jury rig is something that you need to fix because it's required for safety or urgency or something like that. Something has to be fixed. You're not going to get home without it. The mast is hanging over the side of the boat and maybe going to make a hole in it. Um, maybe it's something that's filling the boat with smoke or fumes. It's got to be fixed. And if you're out at sea, you always have tools. You don't have shops you can go to, so you've got to work with what you have. And a critical system, you've got to lash it up to get you in. Now, one of the things you've got to do is fix it as well as you can. It might wind up becoming your permanent fix, but we'll talk about that later. We're going to talk about one of our little critical fixes, which is when we had a moment with our little engine. Well, it's all go here on Salty Lass. Um, Beverly is currently trying to fix our impella. This is what Beverly's done, and I'm afraid to say it's not working. So last year, when we were down near Baltimore, our impeller developed a leak. And we eventually found the cause of the leak, and it was due to a small bolt that had sheared and things had moved around. And we lashed it up, quite literally. That's another term for a jury rig, a lash-up job. And we lashed it up with a stainless steel bolt, and then eventually, with some help, we got a brass bolt that was cut to size and went in. And it's still in there. Now... Is it a jury rig? It's certainly not the manufacturer's part. It's an old brass bolt we had in a toolbox. Um, but we made it as good as we could. I don't know whether the original part was made from brass or bronze. No idea. There wasn't enough of it left to identify it. But we did the best we could. And we think we did a fairly good job because it's still in there and it's still working. Is it critical? Not in here. But it was critical at the time in Baltimore because we needed it to get through the entrance. Or we thought we needed it to get through the entrance because we didn't know what was in the entrance. We'd never been there before. So if you are going to have to lash one of these things up at sea, you will have probably have a dearth of parts unless you're carrying them. And also you've got to make it good enough to last to get you in. But if you can make it last longer than that, why wouldn't you? So when you are doing a jewellery rig or a uh, workaround, do do it as good as you can um, because um, somewhere back there Beverly and I have got a joint on our Eberspacker 
uh, which is actually made out of a potato tin. So we've got one part of the hose and another part of the hose just stuck together and then we've got a potato tin round there a lot. And um, it's been there for about two, three years now because um, it's good enough. It's doing the job it's supposed to be doing. Um, we're not having to go out and spend any more money because that is one of the reasons that you might do a jewellery rig because it's a lot cheaper to put a potato tin in our case than actually replace the whole hose. But at the end of the day, it's not a critical component of running our boat. It's a, <laughs> it is a component of running our uh, Eberspacker and our heating. But the jewellery rig is working and it's certainly good enough. Um, but like I say, you've got to think about whether it's critical or non-critical. In this case, it's not really that critical and it's certainly working and that's why you've got to keep things neat and tidy. One of the problems you're going to face if you're buying a boat is that you're not just buying the boat. You're buying all the half-assed jobs the previous owners did and left on the boat when you bought it. So you bought the boat and you bought all their jury rigs and some of them may not be to spec, to put it rather mildly. Um, our original chart plotter was, went on a slot in the door and it plugged into a couple of plugs in the doorway. And we thought, you know what, we're not happy with that. We want our chart plotter at the binnacle where we can actually use it easily. So we opened up the binnacle and inside was an absolute horror story of paper clips, bits of tape, uh, those little tin foil. Yep, tin foil, those little blue clips that you use in cars to, to join wires together. They were all over the place. Um, the TV system we had here, it was wired to something peculiar that came out through a socket that went to another wire that went to a small inverter that was plugged under here that then had another wire running somewhere else. It was a nightmare. So one of the things about doing your jury rigs as well as possible is when you do finally sell your boat to some poor sucker, at least then they will have a boat which has kept you a nice standard. It might make your boat easier to sell. But when the shoe is on the other foot and you're the one buying the boat, just be aware that when you buy the boat, the electrical system is probably going to be one of the dodgiest things on your boat because everybody's an amateur electrician. It's only a 12 volt battery, you know. It's just like having a double A, a slightly bigger one. Nobody ever died from fiddling with a double A, did they? And that's the problem you will get with a new boat. So jury rigs can bite you on the ass if you're not aware that they're there. So I would recommend to anybody that when you buy a new boat, the very first thing you do is document your electrical system. Open up every panel, have a look at everything, pull out every wire you can get and just see what the level of sophistication is. The chances are that the sophistication will probably involve sellotape. And that's just not good enough. One of the things that it's a good idea to have on board is some sort of spares. And this is not our entire spare inventory, but it's got some useful bits and bobs. Uh, we've got a box with plastics. We've got a box with bolts. That's not spares. They're easily fixed. Oh my lord! Ugh. We got a box full of stainless steel bits. Uh, and we got another box full of stainless steel and brass screws. Note that stainless steel and brass. The phrase mild steel isn't going to happen because that kind of jury rig is not going on this boat. I have spent so long taking mild steel screws off by people who thought, I'll just nip the B&Q and I'll get a mild steel screw. It's nice and cheap. No, it rusts in a week. So no mild steel or else. So in our plastics box, we have all sorts of bits and bobs, things we've taken off, like little caps and things that go over the tops of bolts, um, strange looking valve fittings that I'm sure we'll find a use for one day. But there are more useful things, like for example, brass screws that can be used to fix impellers. They're the wrong size, but we can jury rig something, I'm sure of it. Other useful things steel seizing wire. That gets used for so many jobs. Spare pulleys, spare thingies for the fridge, 
because there's a jury rig in our fridge. The little handle broke, so Gainer took it all apart, got a bolt of the right size, sliced it off, put it in, it's there, it's still working. Non-critical repair. And it holds up the too mean to spend the money principle until we went out and spent the money. But then once we had spent the money, we weren't going to disturb a working system that's non-critical, so we left the jury rig in there. But when it finally breaks, as everything eventually does, we have actually got the right part and our jury rig will become a, a good repair because we're conscientious that way. We've got bits of bottle screws, we've got spare shackles, we've got giant thingamabobby clip things that work mysteriously in some way that I cannot figure out. Oh, there it goes. Them. Snap shackles. That's the word. Uh, more putties. Bigger shackles. So we, we've got all the things that commonly break on a boat or that you need on a boat. Now, when something really goes wire clunk and it's a big part, like your guardrails fall off, well, you're going to have to go to a chandelier for that. But you can't carry everything. We've got spare ropes. We've got spare patches for the seals. We've got glues. We've got lubricants. We've got oils. We've got screwdrivers, we've got tool kits, we've got more flipping tools in this boat than enough. We've got more tools than flipping home base half. I was up there yesterday and they got no tools worth a darn. Trust me on this. So, you know, carry as many spurs as you can, but try and be practical. You can't carry everything. So we carry what we can. But that's why you have to jury rig though, isn't it? Because sometimes you haven't got the right spare. You'll never have the right spare. You will sometimes, but... Like I say, if you break a guardrail, you're not going to have a spare guardrail. If you um, if your boom breaks, you're not going to have a spare boom. Yeah. If your windlass breaks, you better know how to work it manually, like we did last year. We I, I don't know if that was a jury rig, but we certainly needed to know how to work it. Because we couldn't jury rig a fix for it. We no. didn't have the parts. Yeah. So, you know, there are things you can do and there are things you can't do. It's a bit like the old Rums Fendley thing. There, there's things you know you know and things you don't know you know. And there are things you don't know you don't know. And... I think we're at that kind of level. Oh, so I'm going to put the parts back in. Now this has been jury rigged. This has been jury rigged so many times, it's all true. And it's no longer in here, but... <laughs> Remember what I said about sellotape? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Yes, we'll not go there. Right. <laughs> On your boat, something electrical is held together with tape. I guarantee it. Unless it's brand new. <laughs> no, something on your boat is held together with tape. I don't know what the something is, but something is held together with tape. <laughs>